In this video, we're going to try to understand why is it that IPsec fails behind net. And to do that, we need to compare both the normal IP traffic flow and VPN traffic flow both before and after net has happened. So we continue to use the topology from our previous lab. On 40 gate 2 I'm going to run diagnose IP address list and confirm the loopback interface that we want to reach, which is network 20.20.20.20. .20 this network here must be reachable from 10.10.10.10. .10 this tunnel was built in the previous lab and it should be working right now. All right, so our VPN is in, is in place and let me bring this up like this. So to begin, let's try to understand how our IPsec tunnel is formed between the two peers, how the security associations are established and just exactly how these two peers are communicating with each other. So we'll collect some baseline information. What I'm going to do here is to flush IPsec connection, meaning um, I'm going to flush the IC SA that is already established. And to do that, we run diagnose VPN IC gateway flush. And our IPsec is torn down and then rebuilt again. I'm going to stop these messages. This output shows us that there's communication between 10.160.10.1 and 10.160.20.1. This was me flushing the tunnel and the tunnel being re-established again. That's tunnel termination and tunnel re-establishment. But what I'm really interested in here is how they're communicating. Right now, they, we can see that they're communicating using UDP 500, both as the source port and as the destination port. That's the first thing. And the second thing is to look at the security associations between 40 gate 1 and 40 gate 2, but we'll do that from 40 gate 2. We run diagnose VPN IC gateway list. And the part that I'm interested in here, apart from the fact that it shows us the IC SA and IPsec SA, we have one and one is up, one and one is up, and they're both in the established state. Apart from this, what I'm interested in is it shows us that there's appearing between 10.160.20.1 and 10.160.10.1 both using UDP 500, UDP 500. And the last command that I want to run is diagnose debug application Ike and diagnose, diagnose debug enable. I'm going to flush the Ike associations, the IPsec associations again, and then have a look at what happens when the tunnel is torn down and then rebuilt, just to look at the output. I'll stretch this a little bit just to give us more, more room. So looking at the output here, we can see that we have IC communication coming from 10.160.10.1 at UDP 500. And this is now consistent. We, we, we already know this. We can see that security associations are being flushed and deleted and then being renegotiated again. There's a couple of things that I want to note from here. Number one is that net is not detected. So the two firewalls are looking at net, whether net is enabled or not. And I'm going to log on to the GUI for this. I'm logged on to FortiGate 1. Let's inspect our VPN config. Go to VPN, IPsec tunnels, and open our tunnel zero interface. And when we inspect the network portion of our VPN config, would remember that we selected defaults, we didn't change anything, and net traversal is enabled. And the important thing that I want to highlight here is that the firewall is doing net detection, and that means the firewall is actively trying to figure out is there net in transit or not. As we scroll down the output, the other important thing that I want to highlight here, the firewall has figured out that the connection is good, the security associations have been successfully negotiated and the tunnel is now up and it's sending an SNMP trap to say the tunnel is up. So in conclusion, the two peers are communicating with each other natively without any net traversal and the VPN connectivity is up. And now let's do some application behavior analysis outside of net. I'm going to run the diagnose sniffer packet again. Packet any interface for traffic destined for host 10.160.20.1 
the opacity of 4, exec ping 10.160.20.1. I'm going to ping the WAN interface of 482. The thing that I want you to notice from here is that uh, we know that ICMP ping doesn't have port numbers, but we know that it's an ICMP echo request and ICMP echo reply with emphasis on the fact that uh, ICMP traffic has been detected and um, it's been displayed on the output so we know what this traffic is. That's the first thing. And the second thing, I want to do a Telnet test. Exec Telnet to 10.160.20.1. When we do that, we can see traffic came in from 10.160.10.1 from an ephemeral port 161. 81 going to 10.160.20.1 at port 23 we know port 23 to be telnet so we are seeing here that this source ip address source port destination ip address and destination port let's do another test this time we'll do ssh and we can expect oh and there, there we we're picking up some traffic already immediately we can see traffic coming in from 10.160.10.1 from an ephemeral port 4149 and coming into 10.160.20.1 at port 22. I guess the key takeaway is that this is normal application behavior. We see source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port. Now let's repeat these tests but this time let's invoke IPsec. Let's start with the ping exec ping options source 10.10.10.10 10 10 10 10, and then we want to ping to 20.20.20.20 20 20 20 20. and that's successful and unlike before there's no mention here anyway of ICMP echo request and ICMP echo re reply instead we see that there's ESP traffic it doesn't have any port numbers it doesn't have any application identifiers there's nothing telling us here that there's an ICMP echo request and ICMP echo reply going on and the next test we're going to do is to telnet this time to 20.20.20.20 .20 .20 .20. And again, IPsec traffic is ESP. We don't see anything about the source port, no ephemeral port as a source port and no um, port 23 for a telnet port. I'm going to do the same again, this time SSH. There's our traffic coming in. We see traffic still coming from 10.160.10.1 going to 10.160.20.1 but we don't see any ports, no source port, no destination port, and nothing telling us that this is SSH traffic. The big takeaway here is that the traffic in IPsec does not use port numbers. ESP has no concept of port numbers, and this is exactly the problem. ESP doesn't have port numbers, but network address translation expects port numbers. In order to successfully build a net translation table, a net device needs a source port and a destination port so that the return traffic can be mapped to the exact originator. Because in day-to-day -day networking, there could be thousands of application flows going through the net device and the net device needs to be able to exactly return the traffic to the correct originator. And without the source and destination port numbers, it's difficult to map the correct flow to the correct origin. And so now let's go back and we're going to connect to our router, which in the previous lab, it was named R1. I just changed the name to highlight the fact that we're doing network, network address translation this time. Console into R1. And so now we're connected to our net router. Let's show our interfaces, show IP interface brief. Fast Ethernet 00 is 10.160.10.2 and Fast Ethernet 01 is 10.160.20.2. Conf T. First, we need to create an access list that's going to catch all the interesting traffic and the interesting traffic is going to be um, the IP address on WAN interface of 481, which is access list 10, permit 10.160.10.1. We'll use the wildcard mask of all zeros. This is good enough for, for us. And then I need to define interface first Ethernet 00 as our inside interface. IP net 
inside and interface fast ethernet 01 as our outside interface 01 ip net outside and now for our net configuration ip net inside source is going to be our access list number 10 and we want to match this to interface fast ethernet 01 and overload this is what makes it a port address translation meaning net overload we're done with our net configurations i'm going to go back to our 40 gates and i'm going to flush our security associations again um, before I do that, I'm going to run diagnose debug application and then I'm going to start flushing the security associations. Diagnose VPN Ike Gateway Flush. We can see um, several instances of negotiate security association error. This one over here this one over there so basically our security associations are not um, in place and no proposal chain no proposal chosen no proposal chosen so we can bet that our ipsec is down the important thing about net is that our ip address 10.160.10.1 has been translated into an ip address that resides on fast ethernet 01 so that means that ip address has changed and we know this is true because now the Ike messages are coming in from 10.160.20.2 and we know that to be an IP address of Fast Ethernet 01 interfaces. So we want to fix this. So what we do is we can actually do it from, from CLI config VPN IPsec phase one interface. Um, edit our tunnel zero. Here we still have our config, the remote gateway as 10.160.10.1. So we'll just change that to say set remote gateway to 10.160.20.2 because this is where the messages are coming in from 10.160.20.2. This is the translated address. And we enter that and end. And this should fix our IPsec. So this is the most important thing. We no longer use the native IP address. We now use the translated IP address. And as we can see, the IPsec tunnel is up. Now let's do our, I'm going to clear this and diagnose, debug, disable, diagnose, debug, reset. I'm interested in capturing the traffic. Diagnose sniffer packet, any for host 10.160.20.1 with a verbosity of 4. So what I want to do is do the three basic tests again. Oh, I don't even have to. Um, what we are seeing already, even without me forcing some traffic to happen. So what happens is that when the devices have detected that there's net going on, they send the keep alive messages. I'm going to log on to 481 and basically show you where the keep alive messages are configured. On the tunnel interface, because net traversal was selected by default and we didn't change this, the keep alive frequency, this is the frequency that determines how frequently the net, um, the keep alives are going to be sent between the two firewalls. All right, so now I'm going to ping exec ping options source of 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10, and I'm going to ping to 20.20.20.20 .20 and to repeat the exact same test again. So what we're seeing here is that before when we did our ICMP or our ping test, we didn't see any port numbers, but now we see port numbers. We see the traffic is encapsulated in UDP 4500, both source and destination. And I'm going to do exec telnet 20.20.20.20. And once again, we don't see anything that says ESP. We don't see anything that says port 23. We don't see anything at all. All this traffic is encapsulated in UDP 4500. 
um, the last test I'll do is exec SSH 20 to 20 to 20 to 20. Again, no mention of source port or destination port. All traffic is encapsulated in UDP 4500. And this is exactly how IPsec works through net traversal. What's happened is that ESP traffic has been encapsulated in UDP 4500. So all we see is source port 4500, destination port 4500, and somehow our payload is, enca is encapsulated in the S, uh, ESP data. And it's this encapsulation that allows for IPsec to work perfectly even across multiple devices that do network address translation. And it's this encapsulation that allows for our VPN connections and our traffic to propagate across the internet over VPN, even though there's network address translation happening in between. So I hope this short video has kind of shed some light into why you need net traversal and how net traversal works and why is it that VPNs break behind net devices. And in closing, in my next video, we're going to be looking at phase two selectors as part of VPN configuration. But generally speaking, why phase two selectors are a bad idea. Hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the channel.